The shallow parts of marine seismic data commonly have spectacular detail. And so we can use this to explore the geometry of fault zones. We want to explore the limits of the 2D resolution in these profiles to so allow us to think about just how much structural geology we can do on seismic reflection profiles. Well, this image comes from offshore northwest Morocco. There's the seabed, which is that high amplitude kick at the top of the image, and that's underlain by this high frequency seismic character, which represents sandstones and siltstones. And beneath, the rather more chaotic fasces at depth represents mobile salt, and it's the mobile salt that has created deformation in the overlying sedimentary rocks. Well, we're going to concentrate on the sandstones and siltstones in the shallow section. These are almost certainly contorites, sediments that were deposited and reworked by submarine currents. And these types of uh, sediments are commonly characterised by this high frequency seismic fasces. Well, what do we mean by high frequency? Let's have a look at this side of the section here. The section is displayed in two-way time, and the seismic velocity for these types of materials is likely to be on the order of 2 kilometers per second. Therefore, 250 milliseconds two-way time equals approximately 250 meters in real depth. So we can use this to get an idea of the vertical resolution of our seismic data. By just counting the number of black stripes in here, we could count the red ones, but just count the black ones, then we're going to see that there's something like uh, 10 wavelets over that distance, which represents a distance of 250 meters. So there are 10 wavelets, so each wavelet's approximately 25 meters. That's pretty spectacular resolution for seismic reflection profiles, but bear in mind that 25 meters is about the height of a five story office block. So compared to geological rock outcrops, with which you may be familiar, this is still quite coarse. Right, well, let's get some context, first of all, for the overall style of deformation through here. And most striking is that kick in the seabed about halfway across the image, which is the surface expression of a major normal fault that's down throwing towards the right. Something like this. Now. We're not so interested in this big obvious structure. We want to look at some of the smaller structures in here. We're going to zoom in, first of all, at these rather spectacular features over on the right hand side in the hanging wall to the main fault system in here. The scale bar there, you can see the horizontal scale bar there is 500 meters, and the uh, vertical scale bar on that is 100 milliseconds, which as we've seen is going to be approximately 100 meters. We can see that the stratal reflectors running across here are kinked and offset by a series of small fault structures. The amount of offset that we can identify is defined by the wavelets. So throws of about a quarter to half a wavelet is the best resolution we can hope for, which represents, in reality, about a throw of 6 to 12 metres. If we were to come across these in a field area, we might consider them to be fairly significant. Let's just pick one, here we go. Down throwing to the right, we can see that all the reflectors on the right hand side of this structure are down thrown relative to their position on the left. Let's put some more on. There we go, a whole array of faults, they're synthetic, they're basically parallel to or subparallel to one another or at least dip the same direction, all down throwing in their dip direction. They're all normal faults. But let's look a little bit more carefully we can see down in here that the black amplitude kick correlates across the fault and indeed smears across the fault. So it looks like there's reflector continuity in that position. That is a mistie because we happen to have got the black reflectors exactly joining up. And the way the image has been uh, processed, it smears the amplitude across and joins one reflector with another to make apparently a continuous feature whereas in fact they're different stratigraphic horizons. So that's a mistie. There's a polarity match across the fault and the amplitude is smeared across the fault, apparently connecting 
a single horizon together, whereas in fact it's two stratal horizons that are joined together by the seismic processing, not by geology. Let's look at another part of this image, and we can see that this red big kick across the middle of the profile has got a series of fold structures in it, but they're pseudo folds, they're almost certainly amplitude smearing effects, which are trying to join up across the fault. That's such a strong wavelet that the offset of the fault is insufficient to disrupt the seismic signal sufficiently to be shown as a break or an even an amplitude dim. So those are pseudo folds. They almost certainly represent smearing across a discrete or a series of discrete breaks, the faults. So we have to be very careful, not only about assessing offsets across faults, but also in the interpretation of strain localization, whether there's folding or faulting. So the structural style here could be obscured by variations in the amplitude character of the stratal reflectors. All right, well, let's leave this area and go and look over on this side of the main profile. And again, there's another spectacular set of small fault structures. Let's zoom in. Here we go. So again, look at the scale bar, the horizontal scale bar there at the top, 500 meters, and the vertical scale there, 250 milliseconds, two-way time. So it's again, quite a significant vertical exaggeration here. Nevertheless, let's do some interpretation. So we can pick a couple of major faults here that dip and down thrown towards each other, show the offsets or the sense of offsets with the half arrows like this. And now let's turn our attention to the other faults that lie to the left in the central part of the image, and we can pick out faults through here. A whole series, in this case, of synthetic faults that all dip the same direction. Now, in this interpretation, it's fairly easy in that good reflector package towards the top of the image to see the faults. But as we go down, the reflector character changes to be quite bobbly. Well, although you can see the continuity of the reflectors, the amplitude comes and goes. The question is, what does that represent? Is it noise or is it an array of very closely spaced faults, which of course would generate noise anyway? And in this position here, we can see this effect is particularly pronounced. Indeed, some of these horizons look like they're sort of flamey and folded, but that almost certainly is a seismic artifact of including some noise within the image. So these jerky reflectors, we need to ask ourselves, are these noise or are these small offset faults? We've pushed beyond the resolution of the seismic here, a very dangerous place to be building structural interpretation with that kind of detail. Though of course we can still continue to trace the stratal reflectors across here, so all is not lost. If we look deeper in the profile in here, there's a whole series of inclined reflectors picked out top left to bottom right in that rectangle. Again, are these seismic artifacts or are they real geology? In which case they could be things like sandstones or sand injected up the fault planes from overpressured formations within the deformed package. Both are possible. In a 2D profile like this, it's hard to discriminate between these two options. So, so great images from the shallow section offshore northwest Morocco. We've seen some remarkably imaged, closely spaced faults, and we can do some structural geology with them because the stratal reflectors have high frequency, good continuity, which means we can trace good offsets across the faults. But they're still artifacts and amplitude smearing, which can create misties and give the wrong impression about the structural style. This is high frequency data. Imagine the uncertainty now if we try and do structural geology in those parts of seismic reflection profiles which have got lower frequency, less continuous stratal reflectors, let alone migration artifacts. So we have to be fairly humble about the structural interpretations we create in those sorts of situations and admit the uncertainty within them. So the take home from this is the amount of detail we put on our structural interpretation needs to be justified by the seismic resolution. In other words, the quality of the seismic image. And it's the quality of this image that controls the amount and detail of the structural geology we want to perform 